Okay, good afternoon. This is Jim Saban. I'm the chairman of the Driver and Site Utilization Committee. This is to formally advise that as required by General Law Chapter 30A, subsection 18 25, and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID measures adopted during the <clears> state. <throat> signed into law June 16, 2021. The Drive In Site Utilization Committee will hold a public meeting at the date and time noted on the, meeting. On the meeting notice. Public is welcome to attend either in person or via alternative public access provided. So, with that being said, let's get right to it. Uh, number one on the agenda is Riverwalk Park Woodwalk and Event Space Design and Permitting, an update on status and project. Information meeting held with the Conservation Commission, continued discussion on design parameters, layouts and alignment, materials and cost considerations. Eric, I'm assuming we're going to turn it over to you at this time. Sure, I'll put my screen up. Hello, everyone. Um, let me just get this up and let me know you can see it okay. And this will be the same material that you saw in the email last week. There were a couple updates we made this morning um, that you'll see. And those of you attending in person um, got those slides in front of you as well. Is everyone able to see this okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, Kathy and I thought we'd just kind of do a recap and, and Jim was there as well. Um, maybe I'll let you do the introduction and just kind of give folks the flavor. We, we had a a good meeting with the Conservation Commission on the 16th of December. It was more of a informational meeting, but there were a series of things that we touched on. So I thought we should, should go over that. Um, and then we have a couple updates on the park design that I'd like to work through with you this evening. And then we can do the same thing for the boardwalk, uh, just touching on what the Conservation Commission was thinking on the boardwalk. And then I've got some updates on, on some of the design components of the boardwalk as well this evening. So, uh, Jim or Kathy, do you want to say anything about the Conservation Commission meeting in, in particular? Um, I don't think there's anything particular. Um, you know, they asked some pretty good questions. So uh, I think we made sure that we tried to stress to them that we would like some flexibility with regards to issues of supply and materials because of supply chain issues and that type of thing. Um, so I, I didn't hear anything that was concerning personally, I don't know. I think the only thing that I heard was some concerns from Ed Hoops, the chair, um, with regard to the height above the marsh uh, and really wanting it to be a little bit more than the one-to-one, -one, um, especially at areas where uh, we have the, the overlooks. I think there was also some concerns with regard to getting a kayak actually launched um, from some type of float. I think you've got some details in this presentation um, that will be helpful. Um, and then I think a lot of it was just kind of more of clarifying questions or, or, or general thoughts, not really any directives per se. Kathy, yeah, did they have any specific comments on the uh, bathrooms? Remember we talked about maybe moving those bathrooms. Did they have any comments about that? We, we didn't really talk about it that way. We talked about the bathrooms in general with regard, you know, kind of showing the plan of the fill plus the flood proofing. Right. Um, but since where we were looking to relocate, it was actually outside of a resource area. Uh, we really didn't get into it because it would be better from their standpoint. Okay. We did talk, I, I, and I, let me jump back on Kathy because she's refreshing my memory because some things have taken place that have otherwise distracted me. Um, so the, the height ratio was one of the issues uh, and the width, I think of the, of the bump outs. Mm -hmm. um, meaning, you know, I, I think the big issue is, is they want to be able to make sure that they have enough clearance. Mm -hmm. Um, they did talk about the six foot versus four foot, which playing, I think, reasonably well why six feet makes perfect sense. Um, the, the other thing we did talk about is, is moving some of the paths along the river. Mm -hmm. front. Right. And they didn't seem to be you know, too concerned that I can remember. I think it was, it was that we were given half an hour, which was nice, um, but we kind of emphasized, I think, most of the conversations was with regard to the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And as we were getting to... Um, the Riverwalk Park, I think they kind of understood the idea with regard to the restoration uh, and how we were going to be addressing the riverfront area um, with a little bit of conversation about that, about that walkway. I think they really wanted it to be narrower 
and they also wanted it to the different types of materials, maybe something a little right. bit different, but they also wanted to take into consideration, you don't want it to be so low that it's something that's constantly flooding either. Mm -hmm. So, so um, really we had been looking at that 35 foot um, setback area. Right, right. I, you know, I think that, that you, you all touched on sort of the key talking points and I've got a couple slides we can go through that, that further underscore some of those things. I think that the tone was positive. They were receptive about the project. Um, I think that probably the biggest thing, you know, relative to the Riverwalk Park was just um, thinking, you know, about the width of the path and the location of the path along the river and making sure um, we were behind the 35 foot no build. Um, and that path was going to be relatively narrow. I think they talked about four feet would be their preferred width for that path. Uh, on the boardwalk, uh, there were questions about the clearance and also questions about the um, just why we were looking to keep it at six feet, which is a number we've had for several years now in terms of the width. And, um, you know, again, not to Jim's point, just underscoring that we need flexibility going forward for a lot of reasons. Um, but they, they, they took time and they did listen to the presentation and the points we were making. So just to kind of recap um, the highlights, we talked with them about this. Um, this is an aerial showing um basically the riverfront area in these dashed lines this is the 200 foot limit of the of the riverfront area there's also a hundred foot uh delineation in here as well the pink uh shows the area that's degraded and so we wanted to talk to them about our approach and uh, looking at the degraded area and uh, redevelopment within the degraded area we also looking at zones that are uh, revegetated. So we wanted to talk with them a little bit about that, knowing that there's existing vegetation out there. Um, that even though it's in a formerly degraded area, we'd like to maybe leave that vegetation alone. And then within the pink, um, do some areas of restoration, maybe some invasive plant management as well um, to try to mitigate some of the impacts that we might have. And so they, um, they agreed with this approach and these ideas that were kind of outlined in this diagram. Uh, we went on to, to share with them uh, the concept for um, the park itself in a little more detail. It's been updated from, I think, the versions they might have been more familiar with. This one showing the restroom at the southern end of, of the park. Um, and then talking a little bit more about elements like the, the kayak access um, became part of that conversation as well. In this um, rendering, we showed this, this pathway along and just, just beyond the 35, but kind of connecting these two little outlook areas with the idea that folks might be able to walk along the edge of the vegetation and actually have views of the river. And, and I think they understood you know, why we wanted to do that. This just zoomed in a little bit more and we talked a, a little bit about access here. And there was some concern about the, the, the design of the float and the design of the access. And I think the nature of the comment was sort of, you know, if if people are being asked to bring their canoes that far out, you know, how does that work with people on a boardwalk that's elevated and down the ramp um, to get to the float? And so they're asking questions just kind of functionally. How is that? How is that working uh, in order to keep people out of the marsh? And so some things for us to think at on and look at a little bit more closely as to how those connections are made. This is what that area looks like. This is this is not a slide that we shared that night, but I wanted to show folks this evening um, just kind of what's going on there. It's been a place that there's been access in the past. Um, the approach would be to bring boardwalk out over the emergent grass and then transition down with a ramp to a float. And I wanted to share these images with you. These were not part of the Conservation Commission uh, meeting, but I wanted us to just get familiar with, with what was being thought about. This is kind of a cross section here. So you can see the, the boardwalk ramp itself and then sloping down and then over in the river would be the, the kayak launch itself. And that's, this is an example of um, one approach to doing this. Here's the aluminum ramp down and then you can see an, an accessible kayak or canoe. Of course, you could, you could launch off the sides as well or paddleboard. Um, and you can see this one's fairly wide. This might be seven or eight feet wide here. Um, so they, they have a wide approach on this ramp to allow a little bit easier to get watercraft down from the boardwalk section itself. And this is just another view of that um, type of float facility. Can I ask you how long was the boardwalk portion, the couple slides back to, to get back to grade and get the 
the height over the marsh area? Yeah, I mean, these are on a 16 or 15 foot spacing. So uh, that's probably 30, 60, about 80 feet of extension. And then the ramp itself down, you know, with the goal again is, is getting out past this, you know, maintaining height over the emergent grass and then getting past this and then down into um, the river widens out here quite a bit. And, and going back to the original design, the idea was that there could be you know, access maybe going down the river, but probably going up river might be more appealing. Um, and this was kind of a key part of the, the park is to give waterfront access to the public. If you go back to the, the original, the project update page with the aerial view, you get a, a general idea of what that topography, see right there, you kind of cut everything off because, of, but if you look at the aerial view that begins with. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right to what we're trying to achieve there. So you can see it, see where the little path is right there. That's already pre-existing. Right. So that's where the boardwalk would be in that little cove, if you will. Yeah, I think in the past, there'd been some talk about whether it would be appropriate in other locations, but um, for, for sort of navigational clearances and just there's, there's sort of this natural bend where it bellies out with the marsh grasses further back. Um, and it always been some kind of access there, it looks like in the past. So, so that's the site. Um, so we do need to spend some more time thinking about some of their questions and working on the design of that, the design of that element. Uh, one of the other things that we touched on with them uh, that night as well, is we just talked about uh, our approach to the restroom and that initially it would be a tight tank for the sanitary sewer that would be on a regular schedule for pumping. And then eventually uh, it would be tied into um, the full um, pump station out at Route 28 when that when that piece comes online, and uh, I think that they were understanding of that approach um, to dealing with the sanitary sewer. So one of the things I wanted to spend a little bit of time on tonight was just allowing us to sort of revisit where we were in the design process. And Jim, this was something that you had brought up. We had met on December sixth, I think, and it was sort of a a key part of that night's discussion was the conversation about does the restroom work best at the southern end of the park? And, and one of the reasons we were looking at it here was there's an actual grade um, gain in elevation. This end is, is quite a bit higher than this midpoint. And so there were sort of functional reasons to do that. It was also sort of at the midpoint of the boardwalk loop. It was close to the waterfront access and um, sort of midway to the, the park itself and uh, close to the event area and the stage. But um, that night you said, well, what if it were situated more in the middle? You know, what would that look like instead of, we were really running out of land over here between the setbacks, the riverfront area and some of the grading challenges. Uh, I know earlier designs had the restrooms in this area. Um, it's also very low on this side, something like elevation four and a half or five. Um, you had said, well, what if we looked at something more central? What would that look like? Um, so we, we did do a little bit of looking and that's, and that's this drawing here. And for me, one of the things I'd really like to work us work on together tonight and kind of get to a solution is, is, is there a preference? Can we see a direction that we prefer on this particular aspect? Cause it would allow us to go further, um, with the design at this kind of mid park location versus the one at the Southern end by the, by the kayak launch. Um, this location has some challenges as far as grading. It's definitely going to be sort of a contoured landform that would elevate the, the restroom to, to deal with the floodplain issues. Um, but it does put it in a, a location that's sort of, um, I guess, front and center in the park, if you will. It's close to where the artist shanties are anticipated to be. It's kind of at the head of the event space. Um, and, it, and it sort of frames or makes a bit of a gateway piece, I guess, as you come into the river park itself. So I wanted folks to see both of these and, and then get your reactions to these two different concepts on the restrooms and try to nail down a direction we'd like to go in. Okay, Susan, I'm going to start with you. You know, it's, it's like a Hobbesian choice. I, I, I'm not wild about either. Um, I hate to use 
on the on the design on the board now. That's such prime parkland. I hate to have that taken up as the bathroom area of our beautiful park. At the um, entrance, you mean? Yes. The one yeah. I show now. Yeah, that one right there. Um, and then I'm also, do you think people would be driving in and taking up parking spaces just to go to the bathroom? Is that going to be an issue? I just think we, we you know. I don't know how many parks that it might. I don't know. I, should. I can see, the, you know, I can see the logic. It is close to the shanties. Uh, it would be really advantageous for the entertainment that we anticipate. But I still think that's such a prime entry. It's like a, an entrance statement area. And I just hate to have restrooms signs well, there. I just, I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying. I, to me, and, and well, let me let everybody go around first. Can I just say one of the, yep. I, the, the one at the other end, um, Okay, in terms of location between the two of them, I'd go with the other end now. Mm -hmm. I really hate to have bathrooms a focal point as you drive into our park. If we could do something fabulous there in terms of an entry statement, um, I don't know, sort of public art or something like that there, as opposed to the bathrooms, mm -hmm. I'd go back and have it at the other end. Uh, although I'm not wild about that location either, but it looks a little bit smaller. Uh, it is decently accessible to the entertainment area. It is further down into the park. It's deeper into the park, but that's that's okay with me. Of the two, I I go back to the original site. Okay. David? So when I when I first saw Eric, are you going to go with it in the middle? Let me get it back here. Hang on just a second. That's all right. Uh, it's coming back just a little bit slow tonight. When I first saw that one, my, my first reaction was that's a much more central location, much more evenly distributed for the site. Mm -hmm. But Eric made an excellent point a couple of minutes ago. A good percentage of the people at this property are not going to be near the parking lots. They're going to be out on the boardwalk uh, and on the loop coming back around. That makes it a long ways away for them. Right. So uh, my, my second thought is that maybe the original location is better? I mean, if it's if it's if it's okay environmentally to, to keep it there, that's a little more out of the way, a little lo less of a dominant visual feature, and uh, it, it may be a more practical location to put it down by the cul de sac. Anything else? That's it for me. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, both sides have, have pros and cons without overstating the obvious. Um, I, I was inclined to go with the location near the entrance, uh, partly because there will be people parking there uh, to go to the, uh, the vendor uh, sheds and that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm also thinking about future tie-in to uh, the town sewer system uh, being a whole lot easier. Uh, but the argument about having it at the end of the, the driveway, um, uh, the advantage there is one, uh, as someone said, not, not inviting a lot of people to come to the park just to go to the bathroom. Uh, and two, maybe encouraging uh, people to, to use that boardwalk and so on, which really is the, the one of the primary reasons for having the park. So you know, if I had to vote on one or the other, I would probably say uh, do it at the end of the driveway. When you say end of the driveway, you mean where it was the before? The the yeah, yeah, down by the boardwalk. Okay. There's so, a song in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I recognize what, what everybody's presenting, and I'm, I'm just going to be the contrarian for a couple of seconds on a few things. Um, part of the issues of having the you know, to do the pros and cons as I see it. The con of having it down by the um, kayak ramp, uh, ramp is visibility for patrols, police, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> vandalism, that type of stuff. The plus of it is its proximity to the boardwalk, which is going to be probably used more than, than anything else. The kayak ramp is going to be a seasonal thing. Um, where on rainy days, et cetera, it probably won't be used at all. Um, so those are the pluses and minuses for that. The pluses and minuses for 
up front, I'm not concerned about presentation because I, I, I envision that up closer to 28, we'll have some kind of a, a grand presentation entrance and, and not there. That's not really where. But the second part of it, of having it in that upper location would give us the opportunity, if you could go back to that, um, to put not only, if you remember the designs for the bathrooms, we had uh, additional space there for, we had storage as a use, but, but it could be a, a really strategic location for management of ticket sales, et cetera. If you can see how there's a, there's a squeeze spot there where you could actually, that's where you'd collect and sell tickets to events, et cetera. So it gives you some centralized location for utility and purpose but not only the boardwalk, but for future event space that, that ultimately is gonna be used for other things. So that was part of my, th my theory as far as moving it to the other spot. Presentation wise, I think we can make a beautiful looking building, whether it's a bathroom or whether it's a, the size of, I mean, I think, you know, we have the ability to have architects make it look very presentable and not necessarily even realize it's a bathroom until you know it. So that being said, those were my pluses and minuses. Um, how does the, I'm sorry, Jeff. No, uh, no, um, go ahead. How does the, uh, location of the bathroom at, at that location at the more towards the front, how does that affect the traffic flow going in and out of the event site? It looks to me like it kind of crowds it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to look at this in more detail and we are in terms of the grading of the land, you know, this is. Um, in either location, it's a mound that the building would, would sit upon, you know, and I think it can be naturalized and, and the landform can be done nicely, but uh, here there's quite a bit of grade change. So you're going from elevation, you know, five or six up to elevation 11 in this area. Um, and we think we can get uh, sort of a bench in that slope. If you imagine a roadway coming through, this would be grassed, um, but this would allow access to events for vehicles to come in. Um, stay right on this cul-de-sac and, and pay, you know, their gate fee, if you will, and come in to the parking area. Um, and they would fit between the existing property line, um, the bike path access would have to be doing something different during an event. Realistically, it probably has to come through here more so that they kind of just cross the cars once and we don't have bikes and cars mixing. The cars would come in and that would be their access point. If they if they made a mistake and they weren't coming to the event, they could turn and leave or, and this is a programming piece we still have to work on is, is it still provides access to this parking as well for the park itself with events sort of fitting in between uh, the building and the, and the woods. Um, but there are challenges to doing this here. Uh, there's, there's no question. Each, each site has pros and cons, um, but we do think we can get the access to work um, between the property corner and the, and the building in this, roughly in this area. Other than the um, cost saving for a future uh, sewer hookup, any other significant price differentiation you think between the two locations? Um, it's about 500 feet different. So, you know, it's the sewer, it's also the electricity for the building would not have to be run out as far. Um, you know, you would have lighting probably, but um, there might be some savings relative to, to power for the building itself. Um, but the, we don't anticipate that the building's going to take a lot of electricity. It doesn't have heat um, or anything like that. And maybe with photovoltaics, you know, it's, it's relying on alternative energy as well to some degree. I think, um, you know, this, this show, I'll go back to the other one in a minute. This shows there's a little more breathing room for the stage area. Um, there's a little more sort of natural connection, both physically and visually to the waterfront um, that, that by putting the restroom here, this end of the park, gets a little more naturalized, I think. And, and I think if you're in an event, you just feel closer to the water, um, closer to the pathways and closer to the boardwalk. So I think that I think that's a benefit and, and that's nice. And, and I think it's a little sort of closer. Um, I don't know, people maybe feel more connected to the, the space and you've got kind of your structures up here in the middle and then it gets a little more natural as you go as you go south. Um, the, the counterpoint to that is, you know, in this scenario, um, this is a nice kind of organizing element. It's at the, the end of the drive. It's close to the waterfront. 
uh, it's close to the trail system. But you can see the pathways are a little bit tighter. The grading's a little bit tighter in here. And we can refine this somewhat, but you can just see there's a, just a little more constriction because there's a lot more going on now with the restroom in this location. We really don't want to get it any closer than this. This one's a hundred foot setback in the riverfront area. We really don't want to move it beyond that. Um, and, you know, the hope again would be that we grade this out, create a nice landform, and we're able to revegetate this area and kind of naturalize it around it in, in this spot as well. I think, um, you know, this sort of draws you in maybe to some degree, you know, with the structure at the end and the turnaround and the boardwalks. The other location, if there aren't artist shanties, um, there is a little bit maybe of that risk of just kind of coming in and folks using it and then leaving and, and not really spending time in the park, particularly if this element isn't, isn't up and running uh, or the day that people visit, maybe the shanties aren't open. Um, you just kind of have this restroom as your gateway. And then your attractions are, are maybe more down at this end. So um, th that is sort of part of those pros and cons, I guess, as we're making that list on, on what works best for a location. What's your recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'd like to look at the numbers a little bit better. It's a, so it's a two-part answer. We're, we're planning to talk with fire. Uh, we've talked with fire. I'm sorry. We're talking with police this week. I'd like to get their, you know, their input. I think they're going to like this spot better you know at the entrance just because of visibility and control um and i'd like to look at the numbers a little bit and see how our grading works out and see if we can kind of get a handle on the savings um while there wouldn't be as much utility work there's more fill required there's just more takes more to make this building work here because of the floodplain so it's it's just one of those things that it's really it may end up being a bit of a wash to some degree uh, while those utility connections are shorter um, there's more work to kind of elevate the building in this location. Um, you, you could pivot that building as well, right? I mean, yeah, we, we talked about making it what I would call orthogonal or square to this event space is kind of rotating it or sliding it down. Um, I, I do like what, what's happening here. And so that may be sort of teaching us a lesson about, you know, more breathing room at the event area, more natural feel. How can we bring those ideas you know, into this location? You know, how can we refine this a little bit more, um, make this feel more natural, give more breathing room for the stage and the event, and um, and just make it a little more integrated at this end. I feel like there's still work for us to do if, if we pursue, you know, this scenario. And with regards to people coming in and using the bathrooms, I don't think that's going to be a major problem. I don't, I've never heard of it being a problem at any of our community bathrooms. Um, if they're going to go to need to go to the bathroom, they're going to drive that far. They're going to drive another 50 yards because they're going to need a bathroom. So it won't make a difference if they're coming in just for that purpose. So I'm not concerned about that issue. Um, I do like the idea of being able to, as, as you, Eric, brought forward, if you're at that event space and you're looking to your left during an event, you're going to see more scenic, really more part of the area promoting the, the natural beauty versus looking at a bathroom. So I think it'd be here from police and fire as well. Um, I don't think fire will have any real say. Their main concern was they just wanted to be sure that they had access all the way around the in. event space. Okay. Um, and when they saw it, the restroom was down at the other end. But mm -hmm. we're meeting with um, police on Thursday to talk about a lot of stuff, you know, the gates, how mm -hmm. the events are run, um, and then also just the general layout, including the restroom. Okay. Didn't help you a bit, did we? Um, I, th I think it's just, we need to move through it this, this month and, and we may be able to do that through, um, you know, another session that can be brief and focused just on this element. I'd like to kind of wrap up our grading so we can look at the cross sections, share those with you. I want to talk about a couple more elements in the park that, that might work, you know, with some of the grading that we have to do too. And that may help the decision-making process. And then, yeah, I would like to finish the conversations with police about the location. Um, you know, I, tonight I heard, I guess, three, right, three of you. I don't know if I heard from Kathy, but I heard three opinions that it worked, it worked well enough here to keep it here um, with some refinement, perhaps. Well, I, that was my conclusion when I spoke, but I'm not opposed to it in the other location. 
if, if that works better for police and fire, uh, if you think it works better as a design element, uh, I have no no uh, objection to it at the at the uh, forward, forward location. Although, can I just make one comment on police and fire? They're always going to make a decision based on practicality, as mm -hmm. opposed to the, yeah. the, the variables yeah. that we are looking at. They, I have no doubt, they're going to say, "Oh no, they want it up front." It's yeah. easy to get to from yeah. twenty eight. So, I, while I'm interested in their opinion, particularly the police. Uh, <clears throat> I would weigh it. I would balance it with their environment and what their what their job is to do in that in that site. When when we talked, to, David, you brought up an issue <clears throat> with the coming in and turning right to get onto the mm. and having the and having the bathrooms right there. Yeah. That that to me was a good. I hadn't even thought of that, but that's actually a good point because I think it's going to be relatively. <laughs> I, are we envisioning one lane, a dedicated right-hand lane in, and then turning right to get into the parking area? Is that what is going to be envisioned? To the event space? Yes, yeah, so into the event space. Well, that's that little green, light green spot. Right. Some of these guys point to it. That that would be green. We won't be paved or anything like that. Um, it, but it's still space. one. It's still one lane, correct? Correct, Jim. I. I, I would have to ask yeah, we, we would try to size this to let vehicles in and out. So it would be, you know, 22, 24 feet wide. Um, so during an event, you know, folks would be coming in and it might be two lanes in. Um, I know we've talked about having emergency vehicles being able to access from here. Um, and then when the event empties out, it might be two lanes out or they may maintain <laughs> an in and out under that scenario. And, and folks, you know, under this scenario, would kind of loop around the cul-de-sac and then, and then head out. Go back out. Okay. Yeah, I concur. I concur with David. I, I, I can. I'm fine with either one. Uh, I guess if we find out that the um, cost to build and the long-term cost were several hundred thousand dollars difference, then that that would make a difference for me. If they're in the same ballpark, then I can go with either one. Thanks, Bud. Eric, one last quick question, uh, and then we can try to move on. Uh, environmental concerns. Are there any differences in far as, you know, I'm looking at we're within the 200 uh, for the bathroom if it's by the kayaks. Does that bring us any different permitting issues or anything? Yeah, that we right. Have? No, it's a, good, it's a good point. I think that, you know, from a regulatory perspective, folks would prefer for us to be entirely out of the riverfront area, which is this scenario here in the middle. Um, you can see this heavy blue line. Um, so we would be able to restore some of this area. I think we would still have the walking paths there. Um, I, assumedly there would be some type of, you know, kayak rack, dinghy rack, um, canoe rack, some kind of shelter, maybe vendor station. So there, there'd probably be a small structure in here, but it wouldn't be the same kind of footprint you know, as the restroom and the, not the same kind of infrastructure. So I think from a regulatory perspective, they'd probably prefer it, you know, set in like we're showing under this scenario. Okay. Anything else, anybody else on that? Yeah. Okay. Great. I'll go to the next one sort of related. It's just how people kind of flow into the park and, and how access, you know, might work. So we've been spending a little bit of time looking at this driveway and you can see we've tried to sort of open up this, this throat a little bit to allow for a right, a right turn out as well as a center lane, which we think is a left turning lane. And then there would be a, a single lane in to the park. Um, and we've started to drop in. I really don't know the current status of the work that's going on with this pump station, but it's another element that we've got to sort of incorporate and plan for is, is making sure that the pump station can, can fit on the site. And, and we've sort of pushed all of the access components to the West as far as we can to give as much room as possible for the pump station. Um, but I wanted to zoom in on this just a little bit more. So this is a view just of that kind of throat. And so you know, the idea is to stack as much cars as possible. I think this is probably 10 cars here, and, and that may be more than we need. We might be able to shorten this up a little bit. But to have a, a lane that would allow folks to, to turn right, um, and, and this would be on days that there's not a police detail here, so it's not an event. It's just a normal day in the summer. 
but that left turning movement could take a while um, for sure. And so the idea was um, you could let, let the left folks stack here and then right could, could exit um, heading east. And then uh, a single lane in and then the bike path um, just off to the, off to the west. What, what's not shown in here is there needs to be an access driveway and layout to allow trucks to come into the pump station and service the pump station. Um, so we'll continue to coordinate and work with them on, on, on what they're trying to do here. Um, but like I said, we've moved everything that, that we, we can uh, control over to the west as much as possible. You still then, need that 10-foot buffer, Eric, though. We, right, we have that. Um, I think it shows up here. Yeah, so this is just another view of the same intersection. So here's the 10 foot. Mm -hmm. Here's the property line. So here's a 10 foot vegetated bump buffer. And then this is the, would be the shared use path. It's like a wide sidewalk that bikes can ride on coming in. And then there's a buffer in between. And then this is the, the incoming lane. And then uh, we think the left and then the right coming out. Would you and, and it, make that more of a 90 degree when it kind of comes to the end? I don't know whether Mass DOT is going to want that a little bit more 90 and it will give you a little, little bit of space on the left without impacting the pump station too much. Yeah, we, we, we could we could sort of square this up a little bit probably. And, and same thing with the shared use path is there might be some kind of island or something, you know, just to kind of designate this intersection. We, we This is a little bit of a hybrid drawing too. We've tried to draw what we think is going to happen with, with mass DOT for route 28. And so I know some of the earlier designs had a crosswalk sort of in here. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about moving it to the West roughly in this location. So it'd be, you know, potentially the crosswalk in this area with a, with a beacon flashing beacon, uh, the shared use path that they're working on would come down and then they have it continuing in here and then sort of terminating uh, where folks would then, if you're riding a bike, you would then go into an on lane or on street lane to get across the bridge. Uh, and you can see here the sidewalk would continue through this through this area. Eric, would uh, Mass DOT be the ones who's going to dictate the location of that crosswalk? Yes, that... I know that they had earlier designs here and then Kathy had right. put in, in comments on um, maybe it's more desirable to have it to the west. So it is a coordination component, whether we would be building this or just being set up, you know, to accommodate it in the future, I think would be part of that coordination well, discussion. Yeah. Okay. They're doing flashing design? beacons as well at all the crosswalks. Have they seen that design with the crosswalk to the West? No, this is the first time I've seen oh, it, okay. but when I made comments on the 25%, I said, we need to we're doing a big project here. We need to coordinate closely right. and we want it on the West. No, yeah, I, 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 we drew what you, what we talked about, Kathy. So we kind of wanted to start showing, showing it here, and you know we'll go through that process. And, and you know this radius could change, and this could get squared up a little bit more. Um, there is a desire not to be right across from Captain Parker's driveway, so that there may be a little offset from each other, just to kind of discourage folks that okay. might try to drive from one side okay. to the other. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to see what is on the other side. So that's the driveway directly across their main driveway. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. I uh, can go back to the aerial, but it's one of their. They have that kind of loop in front. So if they sometimes it it's good practice, I guess, in traffic, you know, oh, circles to certainly line up things when you can. But in this instance, I'm not sure we want to make that look like something we want people to do. Um, I, yeah. Not only that, but it's wicked dangerous. Yeah, people yeah. wouldn't. Really? Yeah, you can do it in December, yeah, but that one. <laughs> yeah, you could do it in December, but probably not, you know, yeah. um, April to October. Not so. December to be from doing that. All That's right, good dangerous. points. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so but I, I did want to just kind of put this on the table. It's kind of a hybrid, but there's a lot of other things going on here at the at the mouth of the park that we need to work with folks on and just coordinate. But we may be in front of everyone else. Is that is that fair to say, Kathy? I'm sorry, say that one again? We, we may have, be sort of ahead of everyone else in the design process in this area relative to the pump station and Route 28. I think we show what we want to do and see if they can't work around us and, and make it make it work. Yeah, we were here first. The pump station is <laughs> a little bit difficult because the, the um, flood elevations have gone up there and they also have a new criteria where they want critical facilities like this to be another three feet above that instead of one foot above the base flood elevation. 
So they're sig- going to be significantly higher than their plans from 2011. Mm-hmm. What so about they have the to footprint. They have to. I think the footprint's probably okay. Um, but they, they might have to. Yeah, and they they may have to do some some work. But I, I think what Eric and I had talked about. Let's get something on paper of what we're looking at. Yeah. Some grades we're looking at. Oh, there he is. And then um, Hi, they can come in and see what we'll, what will work for them. It's mm-hmm. it's a tight site in general to get any mm-hmm. type of roadway behind by this put the pump station in and then stay out of the 35 foot no build disturbance. Right. And then the 50 foot no build. I mean, the, the structures can't be within 50 feet. So um, that's the 50 right there you're showing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we didn't spend a lot of time um, planning what they're doing. I guess I just wanted to show kind of represent their, this is their footprint, but you can see these are the setbacks. This is the 50, this is the hundred out here. Uh, than the 35. So, you know, they, they probably will be looking to, to move this up, you know, yeah. and, and closer to the street to give a little more room to get the grading and things that they need to do yeah. together. Yeah. Um, they, they, may which, have, they may have to have some walls. It's not going to be an easy thing. Yeah. And I mean, it may be okay. Like it may be kind of a, a, a an entry piece if it's a nice building you know we talk Kathy and I talked about maybe the sign for the park belongs on this side this 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 tight this corner can be tight and a lot going on with the crosswalk and um the path and and even though there's a landscape buffer just it it may be better served to try to think of the signage for the park here and so if you sort of partner with the building you know it could be kind of a gateway piece um, I think if they're planned together, it can be a enhancement to the entrance if they're figured out at the same time. Um, so, yeah, so landscaping, so on. Right. Is it a done deal that there's going to be a pump station there? Is that like a data complete or are there other alternatives that they're looking at? I think it's pretty, pretty much, much decided. Pretty much it's decided? been that way okay. for de- mm-hmm. over a decade. Right. It's the low point kind right. of as, as you come into different places. Yes. Although with the, I tell you, with the new <clears throat> discussions about climate change and water elevation, everything, I, I would I wouldn't be surprised if someone at some point makes a comment about the fact that that's very close to the shoreline. They want these things off the shoreline now and up. Um, so I think it's fine unless someone raises a fuss. But I wouldn't be surprised if we were if they were us to go back and take a look at the location again. Um, it was sort of a semi-topic during the conversation about the water project coming down in 28 and where they were going to put the transfer the, uh, the stations. Uh, but um, that was one of the things they learned from Supersonic Sandy. All, all we, uh, especially in Manhattan, right. all those stations got flooded because they're so close to the shoreline. Bad um, for them, good for us. To have to move. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of flood proofing or something. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Um, okay, at, at, go ahead, Kathy. At some point, Carl von Hohn's here, and I'd like to at some point go back to the kayak question because I believe you guys were interested yep. in getting some input from the harbor master on kayaks. Um, um, kayaks. So for those who don't know, Carl van Hohn has just walked into the room. He's the head of Natural resources, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Director of natural resources. Director harbor of master natural too. And I hold five or six appointments and one is hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wore a lot of hats. I wanted to make sure I gave you the proper title recognition. Okay, that's fine. So Carl, here's, you're familiar with this spot, are you not? I am very familiar with that spot. So it looks like there's been a, used in the past as a launching area and that it's kind of a cut into the river. This is the spot we seem to think would be the best spot for a kayak launching area mm-hmm. so if you could give us some comments and your feedback it would be yeah helpful to us you want the uh as far as other, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen it okay. as far as other locations along the, the riverwalk park really isn't a better location it just because, location. because there is not because it the rest of it is so narrow and so close to the skippy's pier marina yeah. so uh, the, the plus on this location, and we looked at this initially uh, when the marina was being discussed, um, was uh, taking a look at that because it allowed 
some better sight lines with traffic on the river and a place to stage before entering the main portion of the river. And it holds true with the kayaks as well. Uh, that little hollow area uh, provides kind of a milling area that people will be out of the channel and they would be able, if they have to wait to pull their kayak uh, or they're waiting for other parties before they go, gives them plenty of room there for them to mill, mill around and stage uh, for whatever activity they were looking to do. Now, there's a lot of kayaking that goes on the river already. Uh, there was some commercial ventures renting kayaks uh, in the past. I don't, I don't know if I saw them last year, but everyone from uh, Red Jacket to some other private vendors have rented kayaks um, from uh, someplace along Parker's River, whether it's at Skippy's or wherever. So there's already a lot of kayak. Uh, they already commingle with the boating community, power boating community on that river. Mm -hmm. They're primarily power boats uh, just because of the water depth uh, and uh, the way it meanders a little bit. You don't find too many large sailboats uh, coming in and out of Parker's River. Um, Navigational etiquette is key. Uh, you know, kayakers need to know that you can't cut in front of a power boat that's going with the current and expect them to stop. Uh, you can't stop boats on a dime, uh, as well as the boaters need to throttle it back within safety of headway speed or whatever it is as you pass the kayakers. So it's a two way street with the users. We have the same issue in every waterway is kayaking, uh, paddle boarding, you know, stand up paddle boarding and what have become such a popular uh, recreational entity. Oh, what about, you know, signage is only as good as somebody reading it, but what about signage and, uh, you know, Aids to navigation. Are there additional requirements that you would have to put in that we have to put any buoys in? Or it's going to have to increase uh, harbor master patrol. Or what yeah, negatives we, might you? We try to, to get into Park, yeah, We try to get into Parker's River as often as possible. Uh, granted, it falls between our our two ARLs or our two boat stations, one in Lewis Bay and one in Bass River. Uh, so we are, we're not in Parker's River full time like we are in Bass River, because we do share that with the town of Dennis and same with Lewis Bay. Um, so additional patrols being needed, we'd have to wait and see if we see any increase in conflicts. Uh, signage uh, is a possibility, uh, just trying to, you know, I've seen in other waterways, especially in Florida, um, signage that you know, educating the boating public is, you know, please, you know, you know, be aware of kayakers or smaller boats and that type of, you know, PSA type sign. Uh, but other than that, there really wouldn't be anything needed for additional ace navigation because we do not mark the cha channel with the exception of the mouth because it's, a very small estuary and the middle of the estuary is where the, the channel is. Uh, but no, I, I don't anticipate anything additional needing to be done. In, in this area is the channel along the easterly side and close to the cold here with that? Correct, correct. The, the channel, the, those, little, those little hollows, that one there, uh, of course, where the marina is, but if you go south, that hollow right there, that was all excavated to fill the east side when that was all salt marsh and built the houses. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so, uh, so they excavated the river to fill the salt marsh. Absolutely. Okay, yes, got did. it. To build the fingers. So, and there, there's, um, you know, a few other pseudo hollows as you go down, but all the lagoons that were cut in 
to the east, all cut through salt marsh, and that was all thrown up on the bank to, to for the buildable lots. It's solid foundation. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. So you know, this area um, is a narrow river. It always has been. Uh, even looking back to before uh, the creation of of that development, it was just a very narrow river, um, like uh, like so many of them on the south side. So, is there a posted speed limit in that area? Uh, it's it's a no wake, no uh, so it's essentially headway speed. Yeah. Um, my predecessor used to like saying no wake six miles an hour. Well, depending on your boat size, your six miles an hour could cast a, a big wake, uh, depending on the true. So, so yeah, we we firmly pushed the no wake component, mm -hmm. uh, which is typically headway speed. So. Um, oh, about how many boats are it skipping? That, that's a pretty big site. Yeah, um, 78, and it, it sticks in my head. I'm not positive. So less than 100, but more than 50. Yeah, I mean, you can probably count them up on that area, but um, I thought everybody's going along the floor. Line. That, uh, that's and then the fingers that go up and yeah. the top of two feet further down. Yeah, yeah pretty much every property along the river has a dock yeah. with a boat on it. Whether it's their boat. 25-ish. Yeah. 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 On the river. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Carl? Did you did get a look at the um, graphic of what it might look like? Does that I look, did. look realistic to you? Or? It, it does. Um, you know, under the CONCOM regulations, they like to see three feet of water at mean low water. Uh, it's not a very deep cove. Mm -hmm. It's filled in with a lot of organic sediment. Um, so it, it's a little more shallow because we don't have aquatic vegetation growing in that, that hollow area. Um, some of the graphics that you have in your packet of the um, uh, launching uh, well, yeah. you put it in, you have a bar there to help you get in and get out and just slide in. There's even some others that um, are not, uh, they're essentially poly, poly floats, no decking, it's just a poly float that yeah. you can walk on and you can pull the boats up and on and having the same type of bars to help you pull it up far enough so you're able to get out of it safely. Uh, so there's a number of options out there that poly can be broken into pieces and actually and carried uh, so it doesn't need to come out all in one lump sum so there are, is that what a poly float is, I'm not, what is yeah, I'm not no um, and I, <laughs> I did I did print them out but yeah. I left them at the office <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It's a type of launch. Is that what you're saying? It, it's a float. It's an actual float where that wood decking that you see on the picture in front of you yeah. and the black floats that are underneath, right. it's all one. Okay. So the float is the decking. It's very durable. You can walk on it. It's very stable. A lot of people use it uh, for jet skis that they pull up on. Um, you know, I think there's some, some, Docks in the river that have uh, those type of floats associated with their piers for jet skis. Um, it's probably a little bit less money, uh, but it would be a pipe type of system to affix it. And then you pull the pipes out and you remove the, the floats at the end of the season. Very similar to that, but it would completely be uh, all polymer based no wood so relatively light yeah there's definitely there's you know less chance of getting slivers um you know all of that um i don't know a lot about them other than the little bit of research that i've done um, on them but uh, they seem to be the way to go talking with fishing and boating access which i brought up early on that they may be a possible partner in trying to pull this together, Office of Fishing and Boating Access. They mainly look at fish piers and boat ramps 
but they've gotten into car top launching facilities. So there may be some possibility with some funding uh, and assistance from that because they will design uh, in all of that. So something to keep in mind Who's as the, pro uh, the Office of Fishing and Boating Access. They're who I team up with for the yeah. best. They're part <laughs> of Fish and Wildlife. Um, but that's who I uh, partner with, with the fish piers on Bass River Wilbur Park. Bass River Beach, the boat ramp at both Wilbur Park and Bass River Beach are all within contracts with them. Where's Bass uh, River Beach? Uh, Smuggler's Beach. <laughs> See, we keep changing it. I grew up with Smuggler's Beach. It's officially Smuggler's Beach. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. Uh, but, but I was retrained to try to call it Bass River Beach. Now go back. Electronics that would shock me every single time. I <laughs> so now it's hard to go back. Oh, please go back. It drives me crazy when people call that Bass River Beach. So, um, <laughs> where is that? Yeah. It's Smuggler's Beach. Yeah, I knew it. I was just messing with it. Right, right. So um, we have a, a very good track record with the Office of Fishing and Boating Access. We have agreements uh, with Englewood, uh, uh, we have a pending one with Bass Hole, uh, which is going to be more of a car top type of launch there too, you know, still keeping the small boat ramp that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they're definitely someone that we can probably touch base with uh, as we get closer to it. We're going to need the funding. So it's good to know. Did I hear you say Inglewood? Inglewood. They're, the ones that, they're the ones that gave us the funding to put the wall up on the uh, Facing the water on the left hand side. We're not redoing the ramp. Oh no, no, that's where we we had it. We have an agreement with them that oh, we had to enter into when they helped us with the wall and with the concrete uh, yep. planks that went out into the water. So, and, and and to be honest, they were miracle deals because we haven't paid for a single project associated with that. Office of fishing and boating. Because that means that's more money to dredge the channel so I don't have to sweat bullets coming in and out of there. <laughs> uh, Eric or Bud, do you have any questions or comments while we have Carl for a few minutes here? Stay. I just. Okay. Well, he yeah, no, no I, I agree <laughs> with everything he said. <laughs> Yeah, and I, Carl, I think it's great. The Office of Fishing and, and Boating Access, you know, you've got successful projects with them. I'd love to have a more in-depth conversation about what we're thinking here and, um, and see where that could go with those folks. Let's put it this way. They stopped doing projects in Yarmouth because other communities were <laughs> they were doing too much for Yarmouth. That never happens. So. <laughs> So, well, this is a unique, a very unique and very different with the car top, you know, aspect, right? In terms of non-motorized access. Um, yeah, so they're, they're start, yeah, they're starting to team up with communities with car top access points as well, because it's such a growing uh, force of recreation. Okay, let's move to the next section. If Sure. What I wanted to just talk about, um, let me just jump down here. A couple other elements in the park. We touched on the drive, the, the kayak launch, um, restrooms. So, Eric, Eric, before I, I, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, sure. There was a comment that came up on the screen when we were talking about the pump station. The question being, could we move the pump station to the west and the entrance to the east? So um, I saw that come up on somebody's comments on the I screen. I think it was Tom Nicanor. I think it was Tom. That was, that was is that what that says? Just a thought. What if you move the pump house to the west and move the drive to the east? Yeah. Switch them around. Is that well, you have the isolated it, wetland? You're still going to have to deal with the wetlands. Right. Uh, yeah, and I think there's also concern about the proximity of this curb cut and this curb cut. Yeah. Um, you know, as a concept, and I think we probably talked about it ourselves at some point, you know, if the driveway were moved here, um, you know, it may just be getting curb cuts really close together. 
again, kind of getting across from each other potentially. I'm, I'm not saying uh, no, because we haven't really studied it, but it's always been thought that it was best to keep our driveway as far west as, as possible and let the pump station kind of sort itself out. Okay. Yeah, no more studying stuff. We need to start deciding stuff. Yeah. All right, go to the next part. Let's just, I Kathy decided says. we're going to the next part. <laughs> so this is a little more uh, playful, and we don't have to spend a lot on, on this, but I wanted to just brief, brief folks about part of what um, the park is intended to do for visitors, too, is to include, you know, playscapes. And I wanted to show you some imagery of, of what that might mean. Um, you know, we're talking a lot about grading for the restrooms and elevating some areas, reshaping the land and landforms. And one of the opportunities that comes with that is doing something like this, where you've got um, play is kind of integrated into the landscape itself. So this has like a almost like a rock climbing feature here. Um, this is kind of more like netting on the slope. You can also see slides sometimes down the slopes. Uh, this is an idea about a tunnel that kids can go through. Um, so not specifically playground equipment, but more nature-based play. This is an example of um, some balance beam uh, kind of structures using, some of these rocks might be native rock or they may be specifically made for climbing with hand holes and so on out of a composite material and then tree trunks for, for walking and balancing on. And again, you know, having some varied topography helps us integrate, you know, these kind of features. Where are we people going? have to sign a waiver before they use that? <laughs> <laughs> hills would be a bathroom, so the okay. have to raise. I think you're going to have hills anyway. Oh, yeah. Maybe Eric can talk about that because we're going to have um, the porous pavement, so we need to mm -hmm. elevate it enough to, in order to have enough separation to, to groundwater. So by the time you're at elevation, I don't know, six and a half, seven at the parking lot, then get it graded back down to the natural grades, the little um, pod, so to speak, on, on the east side next to the river, uh, you may have some grade changes. Got it. But where are the playgrounds? Where would we put this? Can, yeah, can you show a plan? I, I will, yeah. You know, I, I think that originally some of this had been thought about as maybe kind of being in one of these, I'll call them rooms, you know, these, these areas. Um, but you saw the nature of those elements. They might work to be features all sort of along this, this edge sort of worked into the landscape. So then rather than all being grouped in just one area, they might be kind of sprinkled throughout this edge perhaps. Uh, so that's just a briefing on some of the playscape, again, as how it might work with grading, and, and we'll be flushing that out a little bit more. Um, then second thing I wanted to kind of move on today was just talk about the boardwalks a little bit and just touch on that. Again, kind of the recap from the, the CONCOM. Um, but before we leave the River Park, uh, any other comments or questions about that material? The, no, uh, the, the logs, the balancing logs, it looks to me like Morgan and Morgan have their business cards on, on standby on the uh, information Morgan, board. Morgan. Yeah. They just strike me as a, as a liability. Mm -hmm. um, so my only comment. Well, think, not, not that we wouldn't have something like that. But yeah. I think yep. there's going to be a, a, no matter what you put. Huh? Um, if we could try to find something that would keep us with a more. Um, New England -y theme versus that kind of I, I get the well, concept here. Well, I think I think Eric mentioned that this is nature based, right? So you want to adapt it more of a New England because I love the idea of nature based. That's the whole concept. Yes, exactly. Is to take yeah. advantage of the nature. So that may not be exactly what we want, but it's that concept. If it's drift where, where it works perfect. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, and we might do something where our grade is like more like this line, you know. So this isn't three feet off the ground, but right. but maybe it's just. Yeah. blended into grade so it, it's something to balance on and walk on um yeah. but you know it doesn't need to be this high right in terms of what they're doing here the um, what we I, yeah the concept yeah. of no man-made structures right. more nature yeah. you know rocks to climb on yeah. and you know that kind of stuff yeah okay boardwalk 
Sure. On the, the boardwalk, we, we had covered this before. Um, we, we shared this, this with the Conservation Commission. Uh, we talked to them about how, you know, we had previously been off to the west some, and we sort of relocated and realigned to come inside this little peninsula of trees. Uh, we talked to them about the approach of, of one-to-one uh, here, and there was concern that, you know, they, they were sort of looking for us to go higher. Um, and we said, well, we, we were thinking that we could go higher out here in red and that the marsh gets sort of drops off a little bit and we pick up a little grade naturally. Um, but this is the concept we, we shared with them. I said, this is the approach we'd like to use um, going forward. Uh, we did get some questions as to why we were thinking that we were six feet high. And um, I think that there was maybe some comments or encouragement to look at maybe a reduced width. Um, which would allow us to be a little bit lower. So again, at a one-to-one, -one, six feet high is six feet of clearance uh, in yellow. If we went down to five feet wide, say, uh, we'd still be wider than Bass Hole, uh, we'd be a little bit lower. So um, that was just words and questions that we have heard from the Conservation Commission. Um, the chair directly asked for consideration of, of higher clearances all the way around. Um, but we did explain our methodology. The other thing that we have to do is we have to get down to grade. So, um, you know, in order to get folks up onto this, we have to make a transition, you know, in the forest to bring them up out of the forest to these higher elevations to walk through the, the marsh. So there, there are challenges. The higher we go up, the harder it is to kind of get everybody back down. Um, really we shared, we sh I'm sorry, go ahead. I just was going to say, I really think we need to stick to the six foot. It's functionality is, of four is just not there. Am I? Wait. Are we looking at this portion handicapped accessible? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so all the one oak to six foot. Is correct, correct. Or in, in some areas, we would propose a longer transition at one and 20. So without okay. the la without the landings, um, Did, but just with, like that's all. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, through here. I mean, when I spoke about it at the meeting, I think I said, you know, the the dissect's been consistent for the last four years in the six foot width. You know, that's been talked about since seventeen, I think, or eighteen, um, in terms of of the design of the boardwalk. Um, so so that's been consistent represented that way. The question is, is do we want them to move forward with the plan that they proposed with the one-to-one -one in the yellow and the one to 1.25 in the red with a six foot wide and see what actually happens when we get back to the con, -con? Because there are some concerns expressed that they might want it higher, not just for mm -hmm. marsh and, and shadowing, but also mm -hmm. because of climate change right. and, and sea level rise and that type of thing. So. Um, I think that that would be an important thing to try and, and, and nail down so that they can continue moving forward um, with the bulk of the day. Right. Granted, we're just going to talk about the support systems as well, but the, the whole idea for today is trying to get to some resolution. Mm -hmm. um, they're understanding that when we get to the con -com, they may have a problem or and you might have to come make a compromise and say maybe we we'll go no, down to five feet. I think we have to have a base plan. We have to have something exactly. that we mm -hmm. formally present. Right and this now, is what we want. So, right. A wish list. Now it's more of a wish list. It's more, it's more than a wish list. It's this is what we're presenting as a plan, and then we may have to modify it. But at least we have a base plan to, unless the, unless you heard enough at current con that we should be making adjustments now. I, I didn't hear any objections other than Melissa some suggestions, but nothing that was a, a deal breaker. I think Ed might vote against it. Well, as is. One right, exactly. I'm just saying that as, that as is, that a, as is as because he may not feel it it provides enough clearance. I think there's a lot of really good arguments of keeping the six feet. I think there's a lot of really good arguments of not getting to the one to one and a half um, because of getting there and getting back down again. Um, so I think those arguments just need to be making a formal hearing and, and kind of see see where we go from there. Although, although if you believe, is there any way we could sort of test the waters? Because I hate to have the chairman vote against us um, because the, the board will, they, they take his position very seriously. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. there any way we could sort of do like a semi-official? Well, that's kind of really what we what did we, with and, our presentation to them the other night. But, I, this is, but, but now... <laughs> 
you brought the suggestions back, mm -hmm. and the position, at least of us, is no, we still think we ought to be going with and and see. They will make a formal determination until you submit a formal application. I see. So okay. if if I can just to me, this is all a, a matter of negotiation. And yeah. and in the item of book negotiation, you go big and settle for something less. So yeah. to me, I would say let's ask for our six feet and the one-to-one -one as presented in the, if you go up one, we can see those presentations. But those are our preferred alignment. Right. I would suggest that we ask for what we're preferred. And yep. then in negotiation, if, we can make, if it requires us to go to one and a half to a one and 2.25, to make the chair happy or to get a positive vote, I'm not really fair. Wouldn't anybody want to ever make a decision based upon me being a chair? So I, I don't want to do that. To yeah, we don't else. need a unanimous vote. Do we? No, 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 we just need a majority vote. Yeah. Yeah. I just hate to have the chairman vote. I mean, if I get a chair, yeah. you don't yeah. want to have the, any chairman well, vote. Well, if I vote against you, don't feel bad. So. I always take it personally. <laughs> I th yeah, I think just a comment. I, I, agree with, I agree with what Jim is saying. And uh, you know, we don't want to be confrontational with them, but I would love to hear right. a science-based reason why they would want it higher as opposed to a preference or opinion reason. And that, that hopefully kind of guide, shorten the conversation. <laughs> yeah, but there are some guidelines that they have to go by, but like mitigation is one of the areas that they have some, <clears throat> they have some jurisdictional uh, powers that they can dictate, if you will. Eric, Maybe not the right word, but Laura was saying that the, the regulations are one to one. It's just the DMF uh, guidelines or recommendations are one to one and a half. Is that true? Right. So, I mean, there is some science behind what they're asking for, in that they're pointing to studies that look at the clearance and look at the sun impacts and say, um, you know, marshes do best when there's more sunlight on them. And so, the way that really works, grading is not as effective as just having the boardwalk higher so there's more room for sun to be underneath. Um, we're proposing in sort of the north-south orientation. You know, this isn't, I'm kind of generalizing a little bit, but more or less these yellow runs are, are north and south. So sort of maximum sun coming in on either side. And we switch to a higher um, elevation on the southern side to allow we think for more sun to come in underneath the structure. Um, so, you know, I, I believe it's defensible from a regulatory perspective. It's, it's one-to-one. Um, they're pointing to guidance and science. And a lot of times I think they, uh, they direct other applicants to look at that information as well um, when they're designing boardwalks and say, you know, we want you to consider these other factors. The other thing I would point out is this marsh is fairly, the, the terrain in here is somewhat irregular. If you remember from walking it, there are areas with a range of a foot or more in, in variation. So we'd be going from the higher elevations. So it's possible, you know, right here, it's high. We might be attaining six feet of clearance. Somewhere in here, it might be pushing seven um, just by maintaining an even grade just because the terrain drops off. And we'll be able to show that more in a more detailed fashion as we get into the process and develop what's called like a profile basically that shows where the boardwalk is and then shows the surface of the marsh below. Okay. Um, yeah. Just real quick, Aaron, DMF has just done another study uh, looking at elevations over salt marsh uh, and all of that. And they've done it for, for dock purposes as well. Uh, and they're, looking potentially down the road to increasing those elevations. Uh, so you may want to just keep that in mind on how quickly we can move forward to get these permits. The other is for a visual. Uh, yeah. I don't know what is around uh, in your neck of the woods, but a six foot wide versus a five foot wide. If you put two average people uh, walking a breast or a person walking a stroller or a double stroller or a running stroller, mm. uh, you can really give a good example on how six feet is much more compatible to usage as you are trying to pass people or just walk comfortably mm. on it. So 
some sort of visual, if you can find a, a, a walkway that has those different, you know, five foot versus six foot and do a picture from behind or in front as sure. people are, to try to show that visual that, you know, six feet is needed. It is, 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 that it is needed for user comfort. Didn't one, didn't at one point we talk about building a little mock up someplace? Didn't we talk about having a piece where we could have people actually come in and look at it? I was, it was it this committee? Well, Carl, Carl might, he might remember this, but over, I'll use Smugglers, Smugglers Beach, that, that walk, that approach out to the fishing pier is six feet wide and so that, that has a railing on both sides and I, I think i've taken a couple of pictures of it but it, it's a good if folks are out and about just to stop and watch people walk through there it gives you a good sense of what that six foot width does to you um as far as just feeling comfortable and accessing um that dock how okay. wide is bass hole it's four. four it's four okay. yeah but there's two now so oh, I, absolutely. unless i hear any objection i would suggest that we can be move forward with the preferred alignment and the six foot width and let's work with conservation to get it done. Are the three stars the uh, viewing areas? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's great direction. So we'll keep, we'll, we'll keep working on, on refining this. And then I wanted to share with you some new information because we've been asking me some questions about the support system, you know, and how that's going to work. And, and that's also a discussion with the, uh, the regulatory agencies as far as the, the impacts in the marsh. Um, so one of the things that, that we're recognizing, and we had some questions about this in terms of just the design, there'll probably be a diagonal brace at each of these pier locations. Um, they don't have to be X brace, just one should be adequate, um, kind of anchored into the earth. And then you can see these are starting, we're showing these now with a little bit of a splay they're probably going to work best if they have what's called a batter or a splayed um, angle to them. And so just kind of showing you what that looks like. And then this is an example. Um, so it's a wooden boardwalk, very, very similar to what we've been showing you um, with then a galvanized helical anchor, you know, down into the marsh, the marsh itself. So, um, and I don't know this proportion exactly. I'm not sure. I think this came from one of the um, helical anchor um manufacturers that we've been working with so i'm going to chase down you know where these images are i want to say winthrop but i'm but i'm not 100 percent sure on this location here's another view of it and this is probably proportionally um you know fairly similar if, if we were to sort of say this might be might be six feet high uh or six feet wide in terms of depth we can just kind of get yeah. a sense maybe it's more even like seven depending on whether this is five or six up here at the top um so that gives you a little idea of kind of the the aesthetic it's a little bit challenging because we don't have any people up there um to scale it but you can get a sense of of sort of what that system might look like it also has the vertical railing which is interesting mm -hmm. yeah, right this is so what kathy's talking about is a vertical picket which is one of the things we talked about in terms of um you know, this is sort of anchored and it gives line of sight. If you're smaller, you don't have these horizontal boards, you have a vertical sort of slot you can look look through. Also a little bit better for sunlight, isn't it? Exactly. It's better for sunlight. It's better for using it. Um, and worse for climbing on. And worse, yeah. exactly. And more diff and people like, even at like the, um, I think the overlooks about having tables, but people uh, want to stand next to it, put their foot up on that bottom uh, yeah. thing. So that was an interesting example. Go ahead, Eric. And then one of the things that, Jim, I think you were asking me some questions about sort of lifespan. And so we're working on just understanding the durability in this environment of the, um, of the helical piles or the micro piles are called sometimes. And there is a jacketing or an encase encasement that is possible. So uh, this is kind of what the, what the attachment looks like to the boardwalk. It comes down to the pile. This is a jacket. Um, our, our structural guys are a little concerned about this because it, you can't really see what's going on in terms of the condition of the steel inside. Um, it, it's meant to be protective, um, but it also, uh, maybe conceals decomposition of the metal. So, uh, there's an ongoing discussion we're having internally as to whether it's better to just have a, 
heavy duty, heavy wall pipe and heavy galvanizing, or look at the uh, casing as an option. Um, and this just shows what happens below the grade as the anchor goes in. I also have a couple of views of, there's an emerging uh, discussion that we're having about timber posts. So under this scenario, you would use the helical anchor as we've been discussing. There'd be some sort of transitional collar here um, and then a wooden post up. This is interesting, I guess, to me, it's, it's traditional looking in terms of the aesthetic. It's also interesting because it makes the bracing very conventional. Um, you're not talking about welding braces or bolting braces together. Uh, you have a, a, a conventionally through bolted carriage bolt type of diagonal, like you'd see out at Bass Hole, you have very similar system. I think yours are round there. Um, these might be square just because they'd work a little easier that way. Uh, our challenge would be down here at the mud line is sort of the transition to the helical anchor. You know, ideally that's encased in concrete. And so that has a little more impact in the marsh. Um, so something we're going to continue to kind of look at and get ready to talk to the regulators about in terms of the, the on the ground impacts. Um, there is a possibility that this could be just elevated. And I think we have an image of that. Um, strictly on top of the helical anchor. So you can see the helical anchor. This is a, a saddle that holds the post and then the post up above. Um, we'd prefer to encase this and make this uh, stronger in, in, in case this in concrete. And, and whether that's right at grade or slightly above grade, um, we're looking at that in a little bit more detail. But I, I did wanna share these images with you because it's a little bit more detailed than and it starts to follow up on some of the questions, Jim, you were asking about the, the piling system itself. I was, I was hoping one of the reasons I wanted Carl here is to kind of get his his input on the helicals. And I do know just to mention to the um, to the rest of the group is after the concom, we did go into the room and Rich Bilski was there, a side room and had a little discussion. Um, I got the impression that Rich, um, okay, but, but check off. All right, so then we were not gonna have quorum. If 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 you leave, bud, we don't have quorum. When are you leaving? I'm having another call at six. Okay. Okay, we'll wrap up. Get a few minutes. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up quickly. So, um, I, I just think Rich didn't have a problem with the heel because he uses it a lot on on other math DOT projects. And I don't want to speak for Carl, but I didn't think you had an issue with it either. No, I think the helicals are definitely the way to go. Um, uh, then again, I prefer creosilted pilings. You can't use those any for some reason. But uh, no, the helicals, I think, are definitely the way to go. One of the things that you may want to come up with as far as a visual is if you can get any distant photos of a traditional piling uh, versus the metal uh, pile with the, the helical, only because if you're standing at Seagull Beach looking across, you are not gonna see these metal piles where you'll see the typical wooden pile uh, that you would you know put on top of the helical. So visually this may, you know, up close, not necessarily the prettiest or traditional, but from a distance, it, it may be less offensive to people. Um, however, the helical is definitely the way to go. Can I ask a question? Are helicals the entire metal piece or is it just the part that goes into the it's, it's the screw embedment angle. Okay. So could you do a combination of like on this? Yeah, uh, sure. A combination of the wood plus? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. So because just of interest in time, uh, my comment with regard to all this is um, I don't want to influence the design experts on as to what we should or shouldn't do. Um, I'm a real estate appraiser. I'm not a dock builder or, or a deck <laughs> builder or a boardwalk builder. Um, we have experts to guide us with that. So I'd, I'd ask that the best recommendations from the experts and Again, we're going to have to discuss this with conservation, but my bigger thing is I don't want to try to, to design something that I have no clue what I'm designing. Okay. I think Carl's point, though, that if you get a, a remote 
image. If I understand you rightly, the, the helicals, because they have a lower profile, make it almost look like the, the, the boardwalk is floating all across the yeah, top the, instead of the, 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 the medical me, metal posts yeah. versus the wood posts, yeah, right. I think would blend in right. and and um, and not be seen quite as well, which goes back to the engineering. There is a salesmanship issue here. We have to sell it to the yeah. conservation. We got to sell it to the general. And that's why I just bring that up. Yeah. And that goes back to part of our conversations when we were at the site about whether we use certain types of railings, etc. Right. And the idea of being able to have the boardwalk blend into, right. you know, we want to try to have things be as what's the word? Attractive. Oh, but cohesive with nature right. as well. Right. Uh, I think cohesive. Oh. And so. Um, so I think Eric is rubbing your head. Have we given your head yet? No. I, what I wanted to say is we're we're compiling a matrix just because it's going to be important with the the agencies, and you'll be able to sort of review and weigh in on that. But it'll be a matrix with evaluative criteria. You sort of looking at life cycle, looking at cost, or looking at aesthetic values as well. Um, to help us boil down, you know, the final recommendation on the on the piling system. Um, okay. But this was updated information I want to share with you tonight, just so you had a chance to look at it. Great, thank you. I just would like to do the minutes before Bud leaves. Okay, but if we're um, we're going to do the minutes so that before you leave, so we can get that taken care of. I ask for a motion to accept the minutes of the December sixth, two thousand twenty one meeting. So moved. I have a. Motion by Susan, do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, roll call. Uh, I got a roll call it. Yeah. Bud says aye, Susan said aye. aye. David? I wasn't present. You can still vote. I can. According to the council, you can. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's unanimous. Thank you, Bud. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so if when he leaves, we have to, to go. Um, but the only other thing on the on here is the draft of the 2021 annual report for DISEC. Mm -hmm. um, I read to what it sounded good to okay. me. All right, thank you. Anybody have any comments? Who does this go to, Kim? It, it goes in the actual, oh, the actual report. Yeah. 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 No, I, I think I did a damn good job for not even seeing my work. God, you're so good. You're just so good. <laughs> I just like, oh, wow, I wrote this? <laughs> No, it's wonderful. And I, I thank you very much yeah, for doing no that. It's, I do it for everybody. So um, okay, we're good? Go okay, yes. as long as you're good, then it's because they're due this week. That's yeah, all. we're good. Do you want a motion on it? No. Okay. no. Consensus is good. Yeah. So, Bud, is left. the only thing I will point out to everybody is the, the uh, anticipated project schedule. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a good thing for us to keep an eye on just so okay. we can have an idea of, oh, that's where we're at. So, should somebody ask you, hey, where's the driving site? Maybe you can tell them. Thank you for this, because I. That's why we need to keep um, making decisions. <laughs> yes. Well, this is keep moving forward. And we, we should talk about the next meeting. Okay. Excellent point. So, Eric, when do you think might be a good time for another meeting? Um, we may we may find that we want to talk again in January. Um, you know, the 31st would be the earliest, or we can go right into the beginning of February as I look ahead. The 31st, the last Monday of January, last day of January. It is. It is. Yep. Should we it is. Monday schedule? Yep. Monday, I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, we had no Steve and Rich today, but I'm assuming Mondays typically work. Yeah, Rich had an unusual okay. circumstance. So, so why don't we try to stick to the Monday schedule if we so can? The 31st Anybody opposed to that? Three weeks from today? Yep. Same time? Yep. Does that work for you, Eric? It, it it does, um, and and I I say um, there may be some some new material that we're resolving sooner than that, um, but let's hold that date and and we'll look ahead to do it the the thirty first at four thirty. Yes, that's okay with me. Yes. Okay. All right. Thirty first, four thirty. That's three weeks from today. Okay. Time flies. This. I know it'll be February by then. Yeah, and okay. what, what what the schedule shows is, you know, we're really we're trying to move forward on a couple different fronts. We're we're working on um, 
some of the traffic and the entrance discussions. We're also working to set up a meeting with the regulatory agencies to brief them on the project. But we want to move into um, filing for permits, you know, in the March timeframe. And that's that's aggressive from where we are now. We've, we've taken a little bit of time with some of this material, but um, we still need to work on, you know, trying to hold to that schedule as much as we can because the timeline on the permits is is unknown. Um, you know, other than we've we've done some budgeting on what we think that timeline looks like, but but there there is things are just different and the things take a lot longer now than they used to. So we need to be aware of that and try to get the permits filed, you know, as soon as we can get the plans um, to a point where we feel they represent the project fully and that the regulators have had some briefing on that and understand, you know, what's going to be coming in. They've given some of their feedback to us as well. So we're, we're looking to do that in February. And I think, you know, Kathy, we talked about a 30% in January. That's probably pushing into February at this point. Okay. And we'll know more. We'll know more on the timeline as, as this month unfolds. Eric, are any of the permits time sensitive in the sense that they lapse if you don't if you don't exercise the authority? In the permit, within um, two years or no, that, Susan, that's a good question. Um, and we've had that occur on other projects in other municipalities. You know, it's a, always a worry. In, in this instance, what we might find is that the codes or the regulations are changing. Carl alluded to that a little bit, and, and Kathy and I are aware of some other changes in the building code. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's in, it, it's in the town's interest to try to, all the thinking is coming together, is try to keep moving this forward now. Yes. And we're also, you know, our, a lot of our um, other funding it's for construction and they're like, why are you not starting construction? So we have to keep making, you know, uh, explaining to them why we've been delayed. So the sooner we get into construction, the better we'll, we'll all be. Besides that, I ain't getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It, um, anything else? We're technically not in the meeting. Okay, I think, okay. I think we, we took a motion to adjourn, so we call that aye, right? Did you? Eric, I'm thank sorry, you very Susan, much. Did you second that. Very good. Thank, thank you all, Kathy. We'll catch up this week. Okay. Sounds perfect. Thanks right, again. Thanks, thanks, Susan. Thanks, Dave.